This morning on Sunday, we celebrate Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost Sunday is basically 50 days after the resurrection. Jesus is dead, crucified, buried, but on that third day, he rose again. 50 days after that is Pentecost. And for 40 days, he walked with his disciples. And he showed himself, and he was alive by many infallible proofs. After 40 days, Jesus assembled them together and commanded them that they would go to the upper room and tarry until they were endued with power from on high. You shall receive the Holy Ghost and power. And when he had spoken this, Jesus was taken up but in the clouds out of sight. The disciples to return to the upper room. They tarried and began to pray in one accord. That's important. One accord, one focus, one purpose. Oh, if we could get people to come to church like that. After 10 days, Acts 2, they were filled with the Holy Ghost, spake in tongues, but they were so passionate and full of zeal that they came out of that upper room and men thought they were drunk. Peter stood up and said, These men are not drunk as you suppose, but this is that which was prophesied by the prophet Joel, <coughs> that he would pour his spirit out upon all flesh. It is the day of Pentecost that we get our identification as Pentecostals, as full gospel people, as people that are alive in the spirit. It's when we, that's where we get our passion and our zeal and our worship. Many denominations do not understand how we worship, our hand clapping, our praise, our vocal praise, our dancing, our shouting, our intense preaching, our joyful noise, that's all due the Pentecostal experience. It puts fire in your life. It puts passion in your worship. It gives life to your worship. And thank God I'm full of the Holy Ghost. Somebody say amen. The men of Acts said these people are drunk. A lot of people say we're just crazy. They say it don't take all that, but if they ever tasted what God had given us, they would rejoice too. That brings us to Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were with one accord in one place. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. It filled all the house where they were sitting. Oh God, fill this house today. There appeared in them clothing tongues as a fire and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. That's Pentecost. Let's pray, Heavenly Father. We thank you today for the gift of the Holy Ghost. And we celebrate Pentecost today. We celebrate the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit and the power of the Spirit. We thank you, Lord. And we recognize that the Holy Ghost is our strength and is our power. Today, Holy Ghost, have liberty in this place. Fill us all again with the power of the Holy Ghost as we walk in the Spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody shouts one more time. This is the day that Jesus made good on the promise that he would baptize them with the Holy Ghost and power. That he would give them the gift of the Holy Ghost. He knew they needed more than principle. They needed power. They needed more than education and information. They needed power. They needed more than ritual and routine and going to church a couple of times a week and going home. They needed power. It was God's plan, never God's plan for uh, his people to preach his principles without his power. For if we do that, we're sounding brass and tinkling cymbal. We cannot, we cannot preach something or, or, or to preach something we cannot live or do. Because you can't do God's principles without God's power. You can't do it. You can talk it. You can preach it. You can preach it and, and teach it. But you cannot do it without God's power. Our problem today is we're trying to do something, uh, uh, a principle of God's word, and we can't do it. 
God said, love your enemies, principle. But you cannot do that without the power of the Holy Ghost. There's no way you can love your enemies. You are not that good a people. Now look at me. Uh, the only difference that, we, that makes us from the Lord is we have the power of the Holy Ghost to love our enemies. You can't love them without power. That's the reason we have so much uh, 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 grudges and, and all right in the midst of the church. Pray for those that despitefully usually principle, God's principle. But you can't do it without the power. You cannot do it. Heal the sick, cast out devils, raise the dead. We can't do that without the power of God. That's principle, but we must have power. Jesus had taught his disciples principle, but he knew they could not do the principle without the power. So he wants to give them more than hope. He wants to give them help. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is about an endowment of power in every believer to do the principles that God has laid out in his word. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And, and, and listen, if you're saved, really saved, you want to keep his commandments. Now, I'm not talking about this newfangled religion that shakes a preacher's hand and joins a church and never, uh, 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 never changes their lifestyle. But if you really get saved, here's the difference. You have a mindset that you want to please God. You don't want to sin. You don't want to live like you used to live. Am I preaching to anybody? You don't want to go back to the stuff you used to go. The Bible says come out from amongst them and be your separate. You want to do what God has called you to do. So principle, he says, I will ask the Father. He will give you another comfort that he may abide in you. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot uh, receive. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. That's principle and power. He's talking to his disciple uh, about all this truth that I've taught you, the principles to live by. The only way you can do what I've laid out in my word is that you receive the endowment of power. You need the Holy Ghost, and that's the purpose of Pentecost. The Father creates, the Son redeems, but the Holy Spirit empowers you to do the work of God. Jesus said, I am the way to heaven, but the Holy Ghost is the power to do my principles uh, and my will here on earth. Uh, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And you do it by the power of the Holy Ghost. What we've done today, we've tried to live the principles of God's word without the power of God's word. And we're making a mess. We're falling and failing in our endeavor. That's the reason people have no respect for us. We talk about principle, principle, principle. But when the rubber meets the road, we can't do it. You need the power of God to be able to do that. Amen. And so thy will be done. To keep, so we need the power of the Holy Ghost to live by the principles of God's word. To keep us from being swallowed up in the spirit of this age. To keep us from compromise and lukewarmness and falling into diverse temptations. To stand against sin. Be steadfast, immovable, uh, on, on godly principle. We must have godly power. In a day of deception and error, the church has fallen into uh, uh, the thing of the world and overtaken by the works of the flesh, the devil and the world. And so it's very difficult to identify Christians today because we talk about being Christians, we talk about going to church, but our life does not reveal that. I believe God is saying if you're going to be a born again believer, you need power to live what you talk about. Am I preaching to anybody? Now, now again, let me say this. You are not good enough in yourself to be able to do this in yourself. You can't love people that hate you. You can't uh, pray for those that talk about you. But if you got the power of the Holy Ghost, it will give you the grace to do that. Jesus is saying, I am the doorway to heaven. I died that you might have eternal life. But he says, you need the Holy Ghost to live the life on this earth. It's the Holy Ghost power that reveals the Father and the Son and gives life to the gospel and to the word. The Holy Ghost enables us to do the works and even greater works than Jesus. He said, I want you to do what I did. That's the principles I'm laying out. And if you do the works that I did, men will see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. He said, if you do what I said do, I'll be lifted up and I can draw all men unto you. If people can see born again believers walking in the same power and anointing that Jesus walked in, you won't have to beg people to come to church. You won't have to beg people to live right. They'll want what you got. Jesus is saying, I want you to be like me. 
Because you can't do the principles I've taught you without the power I have for you. You need the gift of the Holy Ghost. It is the Holy Ghost power that gives life to the Word. Without the, the Holy Ghost, the Word is dead dogma in a book. The Holy Ghost power that anoints the message, that causes the Word to leap off the pages of the book and become more than a history lesson, more than what happened 2,000 years ago or 6,000 years ago. It begins to speak life into us. It's filled with power. Uh, it releases the Word to go forth and do what it is called to do. See, without the Holy Ghost, we just have dead religion. Without the Holy Ghost, the Bible's just a black leather book. We have ritual without reality. There are, are a man and woman team that of years gone by, T.L. Osborne and Daisy. They were mighty uh, missionaries in their day. But when they were called to the missionary field, they went to the missionary field and they took their Bible and they began to preach Jesus. But they were confronted with people with another black book, the, the Koran. And they said, no, Muhammad is the way, not Jesus. And they argued back and forth and they debated truth and they debated principle. And because they did, they came home defeated and discouraged. They began to seek God with all their heart in days of prayer. And they got baptized with the power of the Holy Ghost. They went back overseas and they have preached to as many as hundreds and 200,000. They've seen more people saved and miracles wrought in their services. They've seen blind eyes is open, dead men get up. They've seen uh, lame men leap for joy. Why, why are you say that? Because they went back in the power. Now when the church gets back full of the Holy Ghost, we won't have to advertise. They'll knock our doors down because they'll want what we got because power will set them free. Amen. Today it's pitiful, but we have church services that entertain but don't change. We have preachers that preach great words, but no demonstration of power. We have promises we're not seeing fulfilled. We preach hope, but no help. We talk about what God has done, but we're not doing what he's called us to do. We have become bored with our religious routine. We've lost our passion for the things of God. We've become doubters and unbelievers when it comes to God's miracles. We try to survive on education and information. We're sending our preachers to seminaries and they're coming back smarter but no anointing, no life to their message and we need to send them back to the upper room where they can get some power. Our answer is not education. Somebody shout amen. We need a message of power, a message that is anointed because the Holy Ghost is the difference maker. Remember in the Old Testament, the Lord said it's not by your might nor by your power but it's by my spirit. To accomplish what Jesus commanded us to do, we must have the gift of the Holy Ghost. Oh, that's what Pentecost is all about. Receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. Being endued with power from on high. We are defeated and taken prisoner by the devil. We're held captive in the church while the world has gone wild and we sit back and have no power to change things. I want to tell you the power of the Holy Ghost is greater than homosexuality. It's bigger than same-sex marriage. It's bigger than drugs and alcohol. The power of the Holy Holy Ghost is the answer to this nation's problems. Amen. The real deal is uh, the world is in the shape it's in because the church has no power to help them. So they, 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 they come to our churches and they're in and out and up and down because they're not getting what they need. We need a Pentecostal experience that the glory and the power would fill the church and, and it would not be about man. It won't be about a, a, a slick haired shiny shoe evangelist that flies in here on a jet and takes all your money, signs your autographs and flies out without giving you any help. It's about the power of the Holy Ghost and when you come in here that God will begin to do great things. Amen. This power comes from the Holy Ghost. There's never been a time we need power is today. It's worse today than it's ever been. Revival will not come by our president, whether you like him or not. It will not come through Congress or Democrats or Republicans. So quit looking to them. They can't change it even if they wanted to. It's going to take a revival to come into our land when the church has another upper room experience and another Pentecost. Acts 2.19 says the gift of the Holy Ghost is for every born-again believer. For every person that's saved, the gift of the Holy Ghost is for you. Say that with me. It's for me. For the promise is unto you. It's for you. Listen, say it again. It's for me. 
We have so many different opinions. And we have been trained by so many different denominations. But the Bible says the Holy Ghost is for you. And the Holy Ghost is the gift of power. It's for your children. Amen. If we get our children full of the Holy Ghost and power, we won't have to worry about them getting on drugs and alcohol. We're too busy trying to find something in the church to entertain them, some program to motivate them. We need to pray for them in the church until they get full of the Holy Ghost, and then they'll have power to say no to the devil. We won't have to worry about our little uh, girls getting pregnant, or we won't have to worry about our sons taking guns to school and killing their their classmates. Have you ever wondered why children that are raised right up in the church seem to get of age and go right back out there in the world, and everything we've taught them, every principle we tried to drill in them, they go right back out and do the opposite. I'll tell you why. Because they cannot do the principles we have taught them without the power of the Holy Ghost in them. Amen. The Bible says the Holy Ghost is for every saved person. Every believer. See, you're ready for heaven if you say, but to live in this crazy world. To be able to say these things are wrong. Stand up against these perverted teachings. If not, you'll be swallowed up. You'll begin to compromise. You'll begin to wonder. You'll begin to say, I don't know it's what's right or wrong. We're living in an age where people just don't know what's right or wrong. But if you've got the power of the Holy Ghost, you can say, listen, that's wrong. And my family's not going to do that. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. You know what's right and wrong. The Holy Ghost, now get this, help me, is a separate gift from salvation. Every believer needs to hear this. You say, Pastor, when I got saved, I got the Holy Ghost. When you got saved, you're having a Calvary experience. But you need a Pentecost experience. You need an upper room experience. Remember, Jesus is your way to heaven. The Holy Ghost is the power to live by these principles that God has laid out for us. I hear people say all the time, man, it's hard. This is hard. Oh, it's so hard to live. It's so hard to do right. It's so hard. You know why it's hard? You're trying to do it in your own flesh. You're trying to do it in your own goodness. You're trying to do it in your own strength. But the Bible says Jesus took his disciples out and said, you don't depart until you get filled with the Holy Ghost and power. And then not only will you know my principles, you can have power to live by my principles. Amen. In Acts 19, Paul met with a group of believers, and he said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And they said, we have not even heard whether there be a Holy Ghost. In other words, the churches aren't preaching it anymore. In other words, what is that? We don't know even know what that is. We've been saved and baptized by John, but, but, but what is that Holy Ghost? And Paul laid his hands on them, and the Holy Ghost came on them, and they began to speak with tongues. That was 24 years after Pentecost. 24 years later, Paul found some believers and said, you are saved, but you need the gift of the Holy Ghost. And I know I don't care how long you've been saved and how long you've been in the church, I will say to you, you need the gift of power in your life. Amen. If you're going to live victorious, if you're going to keep from being suckered into this spirit of this age, Paul said, you've been saved, but you need the gift. You've been to Calvary, you need to go to the upper room. And a lot of folk don't understand that, that we've been taught so much crazy stuff. A lot of folks in the church today, you're saved, you've repented of your sins, you've accepted Jesus, you're on your way to heaven, you really are trying to do the best you can. Have you ever talked about, I'm doing the best I can. I'm doing my best. I fail sometimes, but I'm doing it. That's because you need the power of the Holy Ghost to help you do the principles of God. Amen? Many times we're defeated and discouraged because we're trying to do God's principles in our own ability. The church has become a place of no help for the lost because we can't help ourselves. Look, get the picture of the church today. I hate to say it. We stagger here from week to week. We don't know whether we're really saved or not. We're ready to get out in the world one week and back in church the next. But we have no power, no zeal. We're just furniture in the church. 
but you get full of the Holy Ghost and there'll be a fire in your soul that says, God has called me to do something around here. I'll drive a bus. I'll work with children. I'll sing in the choir. I'll do something because God's power is burning in me. Jeremiah said it's like fire shut up in your bones. And so, so it, 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 we need the gift of the Holy Ghost. We need an upper room experience. That's what Pentecostal Sunday is all about. That's what it's all about. Listen, when we're baptized in the Holy Ghost and power, that's when revival will come. That's when revival will break out. When it happened on the day of Pentecost, they began to preach 3,000 got saved. Then 5,000 got saved. Because the Holy Ghost power is the anointing and the endowment to bring life to the Word of God. It is something that destroys the yoke and sets the captives free. There is a difference in preaching and preaching with power. There's a difference between preaching with education and preaching with Holy Ghost power. It's a difference, amen. And what we need to do is we need the Holy Ghost. Uh, so, souls will be saved and we'll begin to see people we've been praying for for years come to the Lord. Because not, we're not praying prayers. We're praying prayers with power. See, there is a difference in preaching with power and preaching with no power. There's a difference in singing with power and singing with no power. Because, see, when you sing with no power, you entertain the people. And every, Oh, that's pretty. Oh, oh, didn't they sing pretty? But when you sing with power, the words that they're singing and the anointing upon that song will get in your soul and touch your life. And people will not leave here the way they came. I remember when I first got in church, I was a sinner. I was lost without God. I was living like hell. But then I would get in that church and somebody would preach or sing and my heart would beat in my chest and in my throat my knees would knock and I'd think, my God, i got to do something or I'm going to hell. And I ran to the altar. I want to tell you what the Holy Ghost will do. It will turn your life around and cause you to run to Jesus. Because it'll break the chains off your life. Hallelujah. You will start seeing people saved. People will not be able to come in the church and sit unmoved. You know, one of the things that COVID has did, two things. COVID has caused people to say, don't go to church, don't need church. But it's also allowed people to come back, but with no spirit, no power, no fire. Just let me get through my hour and go home. Some of you have been looking at your watch already. You can't wait. And it's only been about 50 minutes. You can't wait to bust out of here and head to the restaurant. But where there is power, the Holy Ghost is in the place. My God, the power of God will exalt the Lord. He'll be high and lifted up. And you realize that God will bless you in a dynamic way. The power of the Holy Ghost will break the chains. We ever, we've been sending people to rehab and to psychiatrists. And what we need to do is take the power of the Holy Ghost, cast the devil out of them. You say, Pastor, what are you saying? I'm saying some of these addictions are nothing but demons. And what we need in the church is somebody to lay hands on them in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Ghost and cast them out. And when they lay it out in the floor free, they get up delivered and, they, and they're saved by the power of God. So we can no longer, when the Holy Ghost comes, sit in the church, cross our arms and legs, and say, my God, this is good entertainment. Amen. I hope when I preach that it either feeds your soul and excites you or makes you of all men and women most miserable. I want you to get in here and be glad or mad one. When you get mad because you're living in sin and the Word's cutting you to the bone. I don't want you to sit there and, and nod your head like a mannequin and, and say, oh, this is good. This, if you're living like hell, this is not good for you. You need to get in here and get full of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to just kind of cover these bases real quick and I'm going to close. It says, if you're saved, if you really say, I didn't, I, look, I didn't say, you know, because a lot of people today, well, I prayed that prayer, and I shook the preacher's hand, so I must be saved. No, no, no. The Bible says you believe unto righteousness. In other words, you believe unto a changed life. If, if your life don't change, you didn't get nothing. You got deceived if you think you did. It's more than a little prayer. It's, it's not receiving a little prayer. It's receiving Jesus. And when Jesus comes in, you will have the attitude of wanting to change the way you're living. 
Now, you may have some problems dealing with, but you, your heart will be hungry and thirsty to do better for God. I mean, if you're an alcoholic or you're drinking, you'll have that hunger to lay down that alcohol. Not look for churches that have a sociable drink. If, if you're, if you're a, a homosexual, you, you'll say, oh, God, I, I don't want to be this way. I, I want to be delivered. God, I'm going to stay in the altar until my mind, my heart is changed. Instead of saying, well, everybody else that says it's okay, so it must be okay. See, what we've done, we've condoned sin in America instead of getting people full of the Holy Ghost. You wouldn't have problems with deception and perversion and homosexuality and error if you got full of the Holy Ghost. When a thought come in your mind, you'd pull it down and cast it out. You'd say, devil, get out of my face. I'm not living like that. I'm not going to live. No, the word of God says that's not the way to live. I'm going to live by the principles of God's word, and I have power to do so. The Holy Ghost is for every saved person. If you're saved today, it's for you. It is a gift from God. And the only way to get a gift from God, number one, ask, receive, and accept it. Now, I want to kind of show you this, get this picture. Because we've had so much teaching on the baptism of the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost. And we've, we've got people so many, so many different ways and so many different ideas and so many different things. We just don't know what to do. But here's what it is. The Holy Ghost is a gift. Somebody say gift. Yes. Now, it's kind of like you getting a gift for Christmas or your birthday. And to get that gift, you got to receive that gift. You can't let it, 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 it stay in the other person's hands. When that person says, here's your gift, you don't walk away. You don't say, no, thank you. You have to accept, receive that gift. Now, that's the way it is with the Holy Ghost. You've got to ask the Father for the gift. He said, if your earthly father knows how to give good gifts, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Ghost to those that asked him? Let me say this again. It is a gift. Now, so when the gift is given, when you ask and you receive it, now here it is. That gift will do you no good if you don't unwrap it. You can carry it home and sit it on the shelf and say, I got to give the Holy Ghost, but no advantage of it. If you want what's in it, see, if you give me a gift, I'm going to open it before I get home. If it's a shirt, I'm going to wear it next Sunday. If it's a tie, I'm going to put that tie on. A pair of socks, I'll be wearing them socks. I'm not going to let them sit on a shelf somewhere and, and say, that's a gift somebody gave me, but I'm not using it. So you take that gift and you open that gift. And, and here's the deal. Inside the Holy Ghost, there are many things. There's power. Somebody shout power. There's comfort. There's anointings. Listen now, listen. There are tongues. I just don't believe that. Well, then you never will have tongues. You've set that on a shelf. I'm like Paul. I thank God I pray in tongues more than you all. I know there is a such thing as tongues, and I have that in my Holy Ghost experience. And then the fruit of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit and the understanding and the truth and the leadership and the guidance of the Holy Ghost, many other things are in that gift of the Holy Ghost. But you have to ask for it. Uh, so many people think the Holy Ghost is for the preacher. The Holy Ghost is for some crazy crowd. But the Holy Ghost is for you and your children and for as many as are far off. Because the Holy Ghost is just the power to do the principle. I've had people say, I can't forgive so and so. They did me wrong. I'll never forgive them. You need power that the principle says, forgive those. You said, I, 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 can't, I can't do this. I can't do that. The Bible says that's the reason you got to go to the upper room and get your gift of power so you can walk victoriously and triumphantly as an overcomer. 
And everywhere you go, men and women can see Jesus in you. When you go to work Monday, they can tell you've been in the house of God. They don't, you don't go dragging in and talking about everybody on the job. You got power to go into that ungodly workforce and environment and lift up Jesus Christ and have the power of God to overcome. When they talk about you, you bless them. When they lie on you, you bless them. My God, that's the power of the Holy Ghost. And until you get the gift of the Holy Ghost, let me tell you something. You will never be able to do the principles that God laid out in this book. Stand to your feet.